I always say thank you very much, um, and I didn't have time to write that today, but um, so I will just say it. Thank you very much for uh, coming here on your dinner hour, and all we offer you is water, so <laughs> enjoy yourself. And uh, we're trying to move this along, so you know we're not belaboring it and just getting started. You know, this this is the exciting part to get the board off the ground and uh, you know for you all to be doing your work. And uh, so I I forgot to say uh, that I stand for questions uh, after my last part, but um, if uh, if you have any questions, uh, I have nothing further to present. Wonderful, thank you. Any questions for me? No. All right. Uh, this is where we can. Uh, questions and comments from the public uh, as you uh, would like please raise your hand so we can call on you and announce your name and uh, again for us and then state your question or comment Wait, so oh. We go oh, okay so we just I'm sorry Okay, okay. All right, thank you. Yes, Okay, and that would be up to you all. We don't have a rule on that. And I don't have a stopwatch. Shall we? Yeah, thank you. Hold on. How much time? Yeah. How much time? Or do you think? Two minutes max. Two minutes max. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Just let the city council. I recommend more than two. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm sorry, we're going to go in order as people have uh, signed in and, uh, and have asked to uh, comment. So the first one up, and uh, we're, we're looking at a two minute time frame, but we're flexible, okay? We're not going to listen to a half hour comment at this time. So if you can keep it brief, that would be outstanding. So first on the docket is Mike. Okay, uh, I just have some technical questions and comments because uh, this room is wired for microphones and sound. And uh, some of us are a little hard of hearing. And so I think there's a microphone over there with a green light on it. So uh, if you could arrange to get those working next time, that'd be great. Uh, I think that you can actually hear it out of the ceiling when they're working, which is usually kind of the way they... Or we could move down toward the mic if that's the only one that works. Is that what you're suggesting? I'm just saying make sure they work somehow, you know, but, but the, sp the speakers are in the ceiling, so, so we can hear. Okay. Yeah, and I, there's nothing working right now, so next time maybe. Mike, if you don't mind me asking, or Jane, <coughs> who's in charge of the AV in the building? We get in contact with city council and we get... 
Yes. And it, it's locked up, so somebody has to have access to it. Okay. Well, we get it set up ahead of time. Yeah. So we will. Yeah. And that's basically it. Do I have any more time left? 47 seconds. 46. <laughs> 45, Mike. 45. <laughs> well, thank you, Mike. <laughs> Yeah, you know that is a memorial. Yeah, exactly, and I'm sure you understand being a videographer yourself. It and especially it works well for my purposes too. Even though you guys can, we can hear you in our ears. Maybe the camera can't. Right. So it's it's, it's you have to think in terms of the, the machines. Okay. Well, I I hope you, I wish you well. I hope you can do what you're uh, sworn to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mike. <coughs> Next up is Alan. Yeah, Alan Cooper. Uh, I'll, I'll try and keep it under two minutes because okay. I don't want to hear myself more than that length of time. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I feel real bitter and angry about what has transpired as a result of the, our being re illegally removed from the air four years ago after 33 years of broadcast and uh, I think one of the reasons we were taken off the, off, off the air illegally with great the city broke its own rules they had ladders coming up from the uh, from the alley to get in through the transom in, in the, uh, where we were ultimately working out of I mean, they, they, it was kind of like an attack without guns. Anyway, I feel really bitter about it. I want you to know that this announcement here, the reason you have it is because we, we took the initiative to find out what was going on and sent and, and, and had, had it copied for you tonight. This was our presentation of what you're supposed to be doing. And I think that is very telling in itself. I was on the phone for over close to 45 minutes today I couldn't find anybody at all who uh, was involved. They had no idea that this meeting was taking place. I talked to the mayor's office. I talked to city councils, uh, the city council, for, and, and cordially. I didn't get angry or anything. I, I, and they and they said they had no idea where wh what any about any meeting that was taking place. <coughs> I just want you to know that. And I'm proud of the fact that we took the initiative to provide you with an, atten an agenda copy. Um, oh, one of the questions I have here is why isn't you public here? I thought they're supposed to, they're supposed to be, <laughs> they're supposed to be, do this is one of the things they're supposed to be doing. Is, is, you understand what I'm saying? I, I think I do. Um, I hear that um, we need to do a better job of advertising uh, these meetings and getting more people included in on them. Yeah, I'd be glad to be part of that, you know. But, but it's, 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 see, it's not starting now. It's been going on for a long time. So the bitterness comes from that, uh, from that place of experience. We, it was a contentious, our time, the last few years were very contentious. And I think the reason we were taken off the air is because we were, uh, we were, we were doing too good a job. We were attracting a, a, a larger uh, viewership, listenership. We had support support system in, in place. And we covered everything that could possibly be covered in the, in the city and the, the city and the county, especially, <clears throat> including very controversial things like the jet plume spill. We were the only news people that covered that. I think we had four major, five major programs about about the jet plume. Nobody covered it. We went. I, we went. I went personally to the journal and asked them if they would send a person to to copy the the jet plume story because it's involving the water for the whole city of Albuquerque. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Um, could Could I ask a question or maybe a, a make a recommendation? It, it'd be really handy to have your story in writing, uh, and, uh, and so that the board could take a look at what you're uh, discussing with us, the the uh, the frustration you're going through, and 
if you have a suggestion as to what can happen, what you would like to see the board submit as a recommendation to those above us, uh, that would be really outstanding. Any thoughts on that, board? Um, <coughs> I, I think that's a great idea. Um, I, uh, under, I, I guess you you're could, representing or kind of representing quote unquote. Is I, that I, I feel yeah. I have they haven't given me explicit permission, but I feel I was heavily involved uh, during my tenure working with with uh, with uh, quote unquote. Well, I would like to say that this is a brand new board. And we don't come with any baggage or any history. And uh, I think we all are here because we're doing this as a civic duty. And so um, let, why don't we start off with a clean slate? I, I'd be more than happy to. I just, I, I, I'm, Thank you. I'm hopeful. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Anybody have any questions over here? <laughs> well, I, you know, <laughs> it's the last open forum. Thank you. Well, um, I was going to ask if I can get in front of that person just real quick because I have to leave. My ride is here. Who is next? Uh, Halina. Oh, is that okay? Yeah, you bet. Okay, thank you. Mike. This and this is Mike? Mike Trujillo. Yeah. Okay, Mike. Um, I'm a former uh, employee with quote unquote, and I'm currently the board president uh, pre president for uh, the Media Arts Collaborative Charter School, which is a charter uh, media charter school which was born out of the uh, walls of quote unquote public access channel 27. A um, couple of quick questions. Again, how were you three appointed? Was that through uh, a, a selection by the mayor or? Can you enlighten us on that? Because I, I, I don't under I don't know how that works. Well, I can't speak for the other two people, but I can tell you how I uh, ended up on this board. Uh -huh. um, Jane knew me from years ago when we were both um, lawyers for legal aid, uh -huh. and we stayed friends over the years. And um, she asked me if I would be willing to contribute my time um, because of my interest in law to, for the people. Um, and I said, okay, maybe I'm going to regret this, but <laughs> I did say, okay, and then I had to be, uh, go through a background check by the city and um, make sure that um, I didn't have any competing conflicts of interest, and then uh, I was um, presented as a candidate at a city council meeting and was uh, accepted. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this particular board has been dormant for about four or five years. All right, so let me just say here that um, this is a public comment and um, it is not uh, designed for uh, Q&A. Okay. And so it's uh, up to the board uh, whether you would like to uh, respond. But uh, typically in these uh, public meetings, a uh, uh, public comment is that for the board to hear the concerns and respond as you choose. It doesn't have to be here right now. Okay. Fair enough. Well, so given that my like time is on you have a point? No, I just was, those well, are just questions. Know how it all came yeah, to yeah. But if, uh, again, that's, um, I can look into that later and find out, I, I suppose. What um, I would like to suggest to you all is to carefully, um, going forward if you're not aware of PEG, the public education and government and how those channels are supposed to work, I would I would really hope that you would be enlightened enough to really investigate it as the, as it was federally mandated and how it's not being followed now through this uh, particular uh, contract with the city and the and the operators of the channels. Um, I think a lot of people don't understand it and are very ignorant to it and brush it aside. Those, those three entities, public education and government channels, are absolutely crucial 
in terms of public media and again somehow they seem to get skewed as if oh these are channels TV channels oh, we will make them into these commercial entities and the best interest for those people that are supposedly supposed to use these channels through the comp to, through the cable franchise agreement and such it, it's really been blown to bits so if you could do some investigation I could I can point you in directions and where you can find access to this information to better understand what PEG is about. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. I think we can probably go through these lovely, wonderful people here and get the background on that and who, what, where, when, and why on, the, on how it's being operated, who's operating it, and why it's being operated. And, uh, and again, in the public meetings as we are today, more comment uh, to follow would be terrific. Well, that's, uh, Sandy put it, we're a new board, we're open-minded, we don't know all the where for alls right okay. now, but we're open to hear it. All right, thank you for your time, I appreciate it. Thank Have a good night. Thanks. Okay, Helena? Yeah. I don't really have a statement, but I, I'm going to phrase my question into a statement. Um, I, I was listening to Nan's descriptions about, and I, it caught my attention about the CenturyLink uh, franchises all over the state that have been uh, un, not picked up and everything. And I was just sort of wondering about that, if, if anyone has anything to say about that, why, what, what that's about. Do we know much about that? Well. I, I don't think that we as a board probably That's, can yeah. answer that, but I can reflect back what I heard, mm. and what I heard was that um, CenturyLink ha is in a rollover, kind of like a, a tenant that doesn't have a lease anymore, they just pay month to month. And yeah. that's, the, that's sort of the feeling I got about what happened to a CenturyLink. Um, but, um, you know, I, like I said, we're, we're not the lawyers on that one. Right. Could I address a question to Jane and or Nan? Is the CenturyLink, because they are, they are dealing with uh, internet, do, does that fall under anything that we might do here? No. Direct TV or DISH? No. So, um, so um, the, there is one broad telecommunications act from, that Congress passed, but it separates out the uh, cable television uh, statute from um, the um, telecommunications part of the statute. So there's a, a part about um, telephones that is different, that's a different section from cable television. However, there is a convergence of uh, technology, and that's what it's been called. And um, so, for example, and this is just one example, uh, around the country, uh, cities have been successful in engaging Comcast in um, providing, like, addressing the uh, community's needs by uh, providing discounts on um, internet service to uh, certain portions of the community that are low income and or sometimes the seniors and um, so the way that I uh, look at it and I've explained it is that it's um, that, that Comcast is, has accepted it as part of the negotiations but it is not technically um, subject to the same laws as the cable television part. And, um, you know, there are some uh, people that are writing out there, you know, writers and, and scholars and people like that, like Susan Crawford, who is encouraging a rewrite of the federal law so that it addresses some of this convergence because these little categories that have been set down historically <coughs> Are, not, are um, you know allowing? It, it, it's not the best foundation for uh, regulation of telecommunications because mm -hmm. of the changing technology. Sure. So uh, I know this isn't Q and A, but is there where could she direct her concerns? Sorry. Well, um, 
me. <laughs> no, you're welcome to call me. Thank you. And, um, Thank you. I, or come, come up and uh, meet with me, and um, I can give you some um, information. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this. Yeah. And thank the board for taking on this task. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We've got Tom. I probably have a bunch of questions uh, just from my naivety of how all this works and stuff like that, but. Uh, just as uh, someone from the public who uh, I actually have satellites, I don't really know how cable cable works. And is, is Comcast? I'm sorry for the question. Is Comcast the only cable provider in this town? Okay. Um, but it's not an exclusive franchise authority. But other companies don't come here. Susan Crawford wrote about it because they don't overbuild, and so there's a certain kind of pattern that the cable. The large, especially the large ones, do not end up in the same towns where uh, a, a, another large provider is already present. Others don't like chili. What's that? Other people don't like chili. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I guess I guess my other question was uh, I, I guess I understand that the public access channels that quote unquote used it at one point were uh, uh, exclusively uh, uh, open through through Comcast's cable sy system. It, they can't be transferred to satellite or anything like that. <coughs> no, the the peg channels right. are are just with the cable. Uh, okay. So, so since my questions are out of the way, I guess I'll just try to express my naivete or comments I've heard from the public. I, ha I have a number of groups on Facebook and close to 5,000 friends and stuff like that. I guess people are confused that when all this was shut down in 2012, um, there, there was the, the feeling that out there that somebody didn't really want the, the public to express themselves properly. I, I guess... Simon and other people have been toned at City Council that we get our two. We, we the only way that we can express ourselves now is with our two minutes at City Council, and and public public access uh, uh, ha had the means and a number of programs like <coughs> they were talking about to do real investigative uh, journalism and e even people that we met at another Comcast hearing uh, that were engineers and producers at the regular TV station said that they. Uh, they learned what they were doing from, from quote-unquote, and they really liked the fact that uh, those programs were in, in inspiring them at the time to do real investigative uh, jur journalism. And, and the perception out there, I guess, is that without public access TV and with the, the, new, the, the little news department of the alibi kind of disappearing and stuff like that, that... that the, the regular TV stations are kind of being fed, fed a city, city or a certain line from, 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 uh, from, from, certain, from certain auspices or maybe what, what, what the city want, wants people to hear, maybe what the police department wants to hear, a standard line or something <coughs> like that, and, 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 uh, and, and that they're really not, uh, we're not being, the public really isn't being given a voice and and the uh, and and the media in general here is not being stimulated to do real serious uh, investigative journalism on on important topics like Alan was talking about with the jet fuel spill and the uh, you know the medium to high level nuclear waste landfill on on Sandia Labs I issues like that for example thank you Tom well, uh, thank I, you. I think that those are very important comments I appreciate that I remember seeing the uh, public access station years ago, and um, I am personally interested in trying to see that get revived and get that uh, back into the hands of uh, as many public groups as possible, many different uh, angles and persuasions. I agree. I, uh, when I was working for Comcast, I'll just add a little note, may I say this? That Excuse me, are you Brian they or just, David? I'm sorry? Are you Brian or David? Are you Brian or are you David? I'm Brian. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyway, that um, they had just bought out Jones and the old 
quote unquote building was still over on Tennessee. Um, and it was, I remember dealing with them in other works and they were a fine group of people. And as Sandy just mentioned, it would be, uh, it'd be wonderful to see something uh, better come of things. Uh, but as we move along and as a new board and as just simply advisors, uh, we'll do what we can and hear what we can and uh, make recommendations as we can. And let's see, we have Sue. Hello, my name is Sue Skirman. Um, I used to work for quote unquote, and I used to be part of the media collective that produced New Mexico Indie Media, which won an award, award winning show. Anyway, um, so yeah, I found out a few hours ago about tonight's meeting and made an effort to be here. Um, so I think there's broad discontent with the current contractor of public access TV, uh, UPublic. Um, they restricted access to only producers with high production values and they rejected offensive or controversial topics. We knew that when they applied. It, I'm not making judgment calls. That was in their application, the words, we will not, you know, there's going to be no offensive topics and no controversial topics. So basically the end of free speech TV. Uh, we used to allow anyone to say whatever they wanted as long as it didn't violate state and federal laws about obscenity, etc. Um, and of course the spirit of public access TV, if you know the history, is free speech. So um, the people in the community want public access TV to be um, accessible to the public again. Right now the only avenue is public comment during city council meetings. Um, so I have a couple of questions. Um, in the past, there was a committee called the IPEG Committee. I'm not sure if you've heard of that. Very powerful, very non-transparent committee that had a lot of power. Uh, they, I believe they had the power to figure out who was going to get the contract. And they didn't notify the public when they were going to meet. They didn't release minutes to the public. In fact, City Councilor Ray Garduño went to one of their meetings and they adjourned when he walked in. So that's how non-transparent they were. So I would like to know, is there an IPEG committee? Who is on it? And do they have to fall under the Open Meetings Act? I would, I, I would venture to say we don't know. And I don't know that we could say that. Uh, we're fresh, <coughs> we're new, and this is where it starts, right mm -hmm, here mm -hmm. with this uh, advisory board. Um, and your comment is noted. If you have more to go, I'll give you a few more. Uh, Thank you. I have one more question. Um, I understand that you public had a five-year contract from 2012 to 2017, and that expired in June, and that it was extended another six months. And I'm just wondering if that's true, and I'm wondering when the RFP, the request for proposals to run public access, uh, will be issued. And how much time will there be between the issuance of that RFP and the deadline to apply? I don't think we can answer that. Yeah, we can't okay. answer that. Okay. Um, primarily because we don't know. Okay. Uh, and we do not have access to that. And they're working on that kind of information right now with the new contract with Comcast, mm -hmm. which allows us to have those channels. And uh, I'm sure that we'll know this stuff later. We just don't know that now. So the Comcast 15-year contract has to be handled <coughs> first before the RFP for public access is handled? I have no idea okay. we're saying that. However, your concerns about having an uh, open uh, meeting and uh, people sure. giving uh, time to be able to get here and knowing about it are noted. Okay, thank you. I didn't sign up, but I'm here. Can I make a... Uh, <laughs> and I Simon, uh, you go right ahead. Uh, yes, uh, we're definitely going to have a new administration. Uh, how do we know that they won't ask for your resignations, all of you, <laughs> or just disregard you as this present administration disregarded the board at that time in 2012? So maybe this is all moot That's because, uh, you know, maybe we should all wait before anything is done until there's a new mayor and then see, uh, because I don't know, you know, five years, because I would like the board to find out what went on 
for the past five years there wasn't a board because how can you base your decisions on I mean day one was not the day you were elected to the uh, asked to join the board day one was the day the board was ignored prior to uh, the, la the last board so I would like to see hear a comprehensive report of what went on all these years uh, Ms. Winter <coughs> cited a 1935 law. I'd like to find out what's been going on since 2012 till now. Five-year plan. I remember I lived under a five-year plan once many years ago. They were always claiming that they were doing above, far beyond the plan called for. Of course, there was no uh, real comment about that. But uh, you know, knowing that we will have a new mayor and that the board has been ignored and recommendations from the board were ignored by council and the mayor. Uh, you know, so I think this is all great that you're here and that we're here. I'm very disappointed that government TV is not here because this concerns them also because they're a part of this. And I went to a focus group meeting where I confronted the head of government TV. I said, why didn't you have any PA uh, uh, public announcements on Gov TV and public access? And uh, because I believe that the people, the, sus the subscriber, should be f informed because this concerns their money. You know, they're paying, so the subscriber should be informed about what's going on in uh, you know these things. It should, it should be you know they're like stockholders with no voice in this. You're basically representing a stockholder that has no voice just somebody who's paying a fee. So I have a lot of questions and I'd like, you know, like to find out why the board only meets once every five years. You know, that's my question. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, that's all I have on our, those that want to comment this evening. Thank you for those that did. And uh, we appreciate all that, and we will take it under advisement. Uh, you have lots of questions. We don't have any answers. Are we, are we being dismissed now? or No, you're welcome to stay through uh, the like overview of your future meetings, if you'd like. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, public comment is finalized. Let's uh, step into item five, uh, the future meetings. Uh, is this a board discussion time right now, Jane? Yes, I would say so. Well, I'm kind of in the of saying that we ought to have a couple of meetings every weeks until we figure out what we're doing. Uh, um, that's not a bad idea. Um, like I said, a meeting two weeks from today and then another one in a month from today. I guess my concern is that I expected the city to have a clearer vision of what we were supposed to be doing, and I haven't heard what that is. And so I don't, I, I would be concerned we'd be. Well, I, I, I agree with you. And the, the, I think the you point need to speak that up. I think. Speak up. One. I'm sorry? You need to speak up. <laughs> Um, David just was mentioning he, uh, he doesn't feel there's a clear definition right now of what we're doing here and that's probably because it's just uh, training and that we are learning about the board and we're looking to move forward uh, my take on this is that as a board we're going to review currently the franchise agreement once it's uh, becomes what did you call it a red red a line proposal. A formal proposal. in a public document yes and then we'll be able to review it <coughs> make comments ad additions uh, to recommend in that uh, and that is our first priority. Hearing the comments will always be a priority. And their concerns about anything that deals with the cable franchise. See, and what I'm hearing is that um, the red line proposal may very well be ready 
in mid-October, which is when I think we ought to be meeting again. That makes sense. Once we, if we can come, I, what kind of a document are we looking at, Nan? I, you know, is it a hundred page yes. filled with legal jargon? I mean, the ordinances are in your packet, I think, tonight, right? Yeah. Okay. So they're single spaced. Um, um, you know, the, as I recall, we were in the 100 page dot range uh, back 15 years ago. So one document is 37 pages in its current format, mm -hmm. another one is 25 pages in its current format. Those are on the books today. So you, that would be a great starting point for reading. And yes, they do have technical jargon in them. Not so much legal, but more technical. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're probably going to add another 30, 40 pages mm -hmm. to that. OK. Um, with redlining, appendices, and technical, more technical terms. So May I ask why? I mean, I, mean, I guess. I'm a get to the point kind of guy. And when you have to be so descriptive, is that is there a reason for that in in this franchise when the last one wasn't quite that way, but now we have to get nit I don't want I nitpicky isn't a good way to put it, but that we have to get so finite in the way that we describe what we're asking for. Is that it? Mr. Chairman, the, um, okay, so 15 years ago when we drafted this thing, I think I, I'm, so we were probably at 65, 70 pages 15 years ago, right? Um, a lot of that is federal law. Um, since that time, our relationship with Comcast has matured. And in fact, Comcast relationships with customers all over the country has matured. And so now we have a better understanding of what our INET needs. We have a better understanding of what the PEG channels can do. We have a better understanding of what consumer protections will work in New Mexico where they've wor and what they've done in other jurisdictions. So when I say we're going to add another 30, 40 pages to this, it's because our relationship with video, with cable, has matured in 15 years. So what's coming in is consumer protections, and developments in the in the industry that just bring this thing into the 21st century. I, I mean, it, could we be more precise? I'm not sure that we could, um, and I'm not sure that Comcast is expecting us to be any less precise than we plan on being. Okay. So, you know, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, we're going to add a few pages. <laughs> I don't have anything to add to uh, Mr. Chairman and members uh, to, um, and I don't know how formal you want, but. Um, to um, what Nan is saying, and she's saying it very well. Um, I would say I would only add that uh, what what you're going to see is modeled after the ordinances from the best, you know, the best ordinances in our view in the country. And uh, so I don't want to give anything away, but those would be from Philadelphia, Seattle, Portland, mm -hmm. and so on. Okay. So uh, we're not reinventing the wheel, but we're trying to get the best from the best. All right. Wonderful. Uh, David, does that help clarify anything? It still feels to me like there's not much to do until we have something new. The uh, so red line, line to complaints about how the existing soon to be rewritten right. uh, ordinance uh, but perhaps perhaps you guys know something different uh, so is it <coughs> Nan is it possible that you can alert us when um, the proposals getting ready to be released and, and then we can do the 72 hour notice for another meeting yeah, yeah. Jane and I will definitely have to coordinate on that Okay. That only gives us 72 hours to read your 100 plus pages. <laughs> um, as, a, as a topic which was uh, key in the public comment time uh, regarding PEG, 
is that something under our jurisdiction? Our yes. advisory rights. Yes. You want me to read it? It's in C3. So, okay, that's fine. So Nan, I, I did see PEG in there, but I didn't know they were mentioning another board. Oh, the IPEG. Oh, the IPEG. Okay. So um, what this board can do is make recommendations to the mayor and council for the best use of public access, education, and government PEG channels of uh, the cable television system. That's our jurisdiction. Yes. So I have a question for Nan. Is it possible that um, you can give us a rundown of the major changes that your proposal would entail? Sort of like a tutorial? To Before or after? Thank you. Or at the same time? Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Well, what do you think would be the most well, I, I envision that at your next board meeting that Jane and I would both jointly present to you mm -hmm. um, the big picture amendments. I mean, I can tell you right now that there's two appendices that don't exist that are coming in, right? Um, we're getting a little more detailed on customer service standards. Um, you know, that's not a secret. Um, but yeah, I, I would envision a, a major presentation by Jane and I you know, high points, and then we can get into the nitty gritty if you want. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it'll. I mean, I and yeah, I think again, your base reading is probably the ordinances as they exist today. Yeah, we could probably do that in October, mm -hmm. and uh, we can also. Um, I you know I think that we we can, although you know I don't have a lot of experience with boards and commissions, and I'll admit that. Um, I think that we can um, provide some background briefing one-on-one, -on -one, as long as we're not uh, meeting with all three of you all together, because you may have individual questions. And um, we can provide you with um, an overview of what we're trying to accomplish and what the issues are, for sure. Yeah, that I think that's what we've been trying to get at. and. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Because we're, we're kind of in the dark. <laughs> and uh, I, okay, it's so not like we want any power. We just want more information. Okay, so I, th you know, I think that we already told us the Comcast in a general way at the meeting that we are looking at a consumer bill of rights because other cities have this. Right. And we don't have this right now. Um, all it says in our ordinance right now is, and this is, you know, again, 15 years ago, and, w and, and under the old ordinance, there was rate regulation was possible. And um, uh, so uh, we are uh, looking at a consumer bill of rights uh, similar to what some of these cities I mentioned to you um, have. Um, uh, also potentially a uh, consumer bill of rights that uh, protects the privacy of uh, people, and of course that would have to do with the um, information that is given to Comcast, but um, also um, the kind of content that, uh, kind of information about what people are watching on television and uh, what sites they're visiting um, on the internet. So that is venturing into the internet, but I've seen some ordinances that do that. So um, that's one issue. Another issue is maintaining the PEG stations and um, not letting uh, Comcast take any of those away right now. Um, that's what we envision. Um, that the city um, continue to have um, access to the um, institutional network without having to pay a management fee. And so um, that requires some writing into the ordinance, which is kind of like, a, it is an agreement. And so it is passed through the city council as an ordinance, but it starts off as an agreement. And as Nan mentioned earlier, um, it doesn't become effective until the provider, Comcast provider, to the cable provider, signs an acceptance of it, right? right. And um, so... Um, so I move that our next meeting coincide with the announcement that the redlined 
proposal is being released to public uh, comment and that our next meeting be, I'm going to say, four days um, after that. that you wanna, we need a second? Yeah. Without knowing when that would be, I'm not sure how I could yeah. second that. We'll have to pick a few days in a range after that. Well, work with your calendar. Yeah, uh, we were talking about October 15th to have um, uh, to, to make that public. Well, but that's, that's, a pretty, yeah, pretty that's our our um, target. That's a Sunday, is it not? Well, you know, the middle of October. So then if we did it like four or five days after that, that would put it like October 20th. That sounds doable. It's a Friday. Ooh, I hate Fridays. How about? How about the following, um, well, we can't, well, what do you guys, what looks good to you? If the 15th is, is a Sunday, so really it's, you know. Do we want to shoot for the third week of October? Fourth, the third week is when it's, pro they're thinking it'll be released. So we would need to meet the fourth week of October, the week of the 23rd through the 27th. Well, first let me ask you if Tuesday is the best day for you two. It's not bad for me. So far, Tuesday is um, the 24th is um, pretty open. Wednesday is the semester I'm teaching a class at the law school and basically never available. Thank you. Um, every other day is subject to my wife's call schedule and unpredictable. <laughs> so they're all bad for me. <laughs> but Wednesdays are impossible. So um, Tuesday? Does it sound like a, at least something to shoot for? I can certainly try. Okay. Well. Cool. So I move that we make our next meeting the October the twenty fourth, subject to any exigencies. How do you feel about that? Well, I'll second it. I, I mean, we have no control over whether there is anything. So yes. Are getting ahead in the agenda? We need to write a resolution um, stating when we are going to have our meetings, whether we're going to have them every month, bi monthly, on which day we're going to have them. And we're going to probably only be working with Jane having this for your next meeting. If it's outside the schedule of what you choose, you may have to have a special meeting, mm -hmm. an emergency meeting. So that's something that you're going to have to think about while you're thinking about this meeting. Because you need to come up with a schedule because we have to let the powers that be what your schedule is going to be for the next year. For the forever. Unless you want to. So every year you can change it, but this is good for one year. Hmm. What is that? This is a resolution. It's called Determining Reasonable Notice of Public Meetings of this board. It's not in your packet. We'll because send. We haven't written one yet. Yeah, we'll send it to you by email. Okay. But we can an example of what it looks like. The ones I've written in the past. This helps the public anticipate when these meetings will occur, right. and the frequency. However, because we're working on this uh, renewal. Uh, and we're in the negotiations that um, these are samples. The um, other board meetings. The the board can always uh, call special meetings. So I might make a recommendation. Just that um, you might want to consider every fourth Tuesday of every month, mm -hmm. or every third Tuesday of every month. Right. That I was going to. And then scheduling specials meetings as they're as may be necessary related to the renewal. I like that idea. And there are notice requirements if you read those documents I just gave you, every meeting has a special notice requirement. 
unless we schedule within 72 hours a special meeting. Well, the special meeting may have a different, you'll have to look in there because I don't have it in front of me. The notice requirements for a special meeting, I'm not sure. They're the same. They're the same? Okay. 72 hours. Okay. So, do I understand that we can think about this between now and the meeting on the 24th of October? Or do we have to make that decision today? You don't have to make it today, We're, but uh, we'll circulate a sample of this resolution and you can figure out you know, how you want to fill it in. And um, I, ideally, we should have some idea of what you all want to uh, bring it up at the next meeting so that okay. we can um, publish it, the resolution. Okay, but we do need to schedule a meeting now for our next meeting it's probably a good idea yeah i think so okay so uh the motion stands uh for tuesday october 24th at 5 30. second and we have a second all in favor say aye aye, aye. motion carries our next meeting for this board will be October 24th at 5.30 in this room. Is that correct, Janice? I have to schedule it. I just talked to City Council. They say Tuesdays are the best days for this room. So if, you, if you're looking for the future fuel meeting, that would be a really good day to do it because we have City Council and um, other committees that meet in here, but Tuesdays are the best. All right, this so day. if it's not available, We'll make other arrangements. We'll find a new location. Mm -hmm. All right, wonderful. And whichever, if it's a different location, will we be able to honor the gentleman's request that it be um, microphoned and um, amplified? I have, to, I have to find out. Like if it's in city council chambers, that is microphone, just like it is here. But other, I, I have to. I have to call and see what I can do. Okay. It won't be, if it's going to be a microphone, it won't be anywhere that cannot accommodate that. I'll work that out. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best and we'll probably be able to come up with something. If, if nothing else, we can probably meet, you know, we can meet in the chambers. Well, gentlemen, that was my family calling me. <laughs> yeah. so, so I move that we adjourn for the evening. Um, did we? Uh, okay. Uh, the motion is we adjourn for this evening. Uh, item 5B, C, and D. D, we have just discussed. Uh, the C, we kind of had a discussion before uh, the actual meeting took place in regards to how the information of the meeting is going to be distributed. Did, did we not have that kind of discussion about where it would be distributed and how it would be distributed? I think that's going to have to be ongoing, but for sure we're going to have a, a list of the broadcast uh, uh, radio and television station. And we'll start sooner. And of course, uh, the me members of the public that were here today will help us, um, you know, get the word out. Okay. And, um, you know, I would like to say on uh, number um, 5B that this uh, rules of practice and procedure are in your, the uh, rules are in your packet. We didn't really discuss this. Um, for the next meeting, I can work on it a little bit. A, a lot of this has to do with the rate regulation. Right. So, um, okay. so it's absolutely yeah, I might talk with you all individually and, and see, get some ideas for how to, uh, to uh, fix this. If you want these kind of rules. I think that you need rules and uh, procedure, but I'll, let me research and see what other uh, boards and commissions have. And I'll, you know, you have this one, and let me see if there are kind of simpler procedures uh, from for other boards and commissions, and then I'll send you those uh, by email individually. Okay. <laughs> and then um, you can give me your ideas, and then uh, we'll 
have some kind of draft of uh, procedures for the next meeting. That would be so wonderful. So I would s say this would have to be deferred at this point. Okay. Motion is to adjourn with uh, procedural rules discussion to be carried over to our next meeting. Second. Yes. Yeah. I'll second that. Uh, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just strange, only three of us doing this, okay. Uh, let me take a count of hands here, okay. Uh, motion carries and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Th thank you, Jane, Janice, Nan. thank you very much. Mike, thank you. I thank you, three, buddy. I got three minutes left, you guys wanna do some jokes? <laughs> Thank you, Mike, and thank you, Simon. Oh. <laughs>